series, we're going to each week have a missionary biographical sketch. What that means is I'm going to go through the entire life of a missionary each week. And so it is a very shortened version of a, li a life story of a missionary, but I'm sure it will be very uh, helpful, very encouraging, sometimes convicting. And so uh, we're going to look today at the man William Carey. William Carey is known as the father of modern missions. He was born in 1761, England. His father was uh, a learned man. He taught his son botany and horticulture. And so he learned all about the different arts of the field. And so age 11, he was a person that uh, was quite inquisitive about language. And so he got a book and learned how to learn Latin. All by himself, he learned Latin. I don't think I could do that myself. <laughs> I don't know about, about you, but that's pretty impressive for an 11-year-old. Um, age 14, he started an apprenticeship as a cobbler. He made shoes and, and, and fixed shoes uh, as a possibility of a uh, profession. During this time, he mastered Greek, he mastered Hebrew. What a masterful mind for language, amazing. At uh, age 16, he was one of the most learned persons in England. Incredible. Uh, he worked alongside another apprentice who shared the Lord with him at this point in time. And at age 17, he got saved and he joined a church. And due to that, he then at age 18 surrendered to the call that God had for him. He just surrendered his life to whatever God had for him. Then as he, as he went through the years, he read in 1785 a book all about the life of da David Brainerd. David Brainerd, for those who don't know, he was a missionary to the Indians, son-in-law possibly to Jonathan Edwards, and Jonathan Edwards actually wrote the book about him. It was his journals that he just made into a book, and that made an impression on many, many people for missions. And so he uh, really enjoyed that book, and it really convicted him about prayer and really about missions. In 1792, he published a book called The Inquiry. It has a longer title to it because back then, those books would have longer titles to them. But the inquiry was published at that point, and due to what the contents was, he started a missionary society there in England. Uh, at that point in time in England, people that most thought about uh, missions in England, the, the idea was that the disciples and the apostles fulfilled the Great Commission. So it's no longer applicable to us today, which he very much disagreed. In one of his sermons, he, he spoke about what to expect and as a missionary, and he said, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. About the very fact that the commission, it was for a, the first century church, he said, is not the commission of our Lord still binding upon us can we not do more than now we are doing? And so he was all about missions. And so with all of this said, he felt a need to become part of this missionary society. He formed with 14 pastors, and there he felt the call to go to India. There was a medical uh, missionary getting support at that point in time, and he went with that person back to India. He took his wife. At this point in time, it was not a mutual thing that both of them were all about missions, but she really did not want to go. And so that was a burden upon him uh, for the majority of their married life. And so he went in 1793 and landed in India. He there... Uh, made a way for his own support uh, 
to be given. He became a manager of a factory there and worked with the doctor to promote Christianity throughout uh, India. Helpers came in 1800, and they all established the mission that is there, and they finished. Remember, he's all about language, right? So he translated the New Testament into the language of India. And so he finished that in 1800. Then we see in 1808, he published the New Testament in Sanskrit. In 1809, he published the Bible in uh, Bengali, the entire Bible. Uh, In 1811, he published the New Testament in a couple other languages. In 1812, he published the Bible in Sanskrit. From 1807 to 1812, he developed a universal dictionary on Oriental languages. In 1818, he started a college there in India to train uh, people uh, for, for more education. He was all about education. He actually was the one that helped Adoniram Judson to come himself to India. He supported him, saying, for the Baptist churches to support Adoniram Judson, even though at that point in time, Judson was not a Baptist. But the Baptist church says, yes, we will support him. He was the first American missionary uh, of, of any point in time. He was the first American missionary that, he, that William Carey helped him come to India. In 1834, uh, William Carey went to be with the Lord. He established many schools for the underprivileged children that promoted reading, writing, uh, you know, math, as well as Christianity. And so 41 years he was in India without furlough. He just worked and he preached and he translated all these languages, all the Bible into these languages. He only had in the mission itself 700 known converts, but he laid the foundation with Bible translation and education to promote a more and more missionaries to come to India. He once said, it is the duty of those who are entrusted with the gospel to endure to make it known among all nations. He also said, I'm not afraid of failure. I love this quote. I'm not afraid of failure. I'm afraid of succeeding at things that don't matter. Amazing. He also said, I went to India as a missionary to save England from spiritual collapse. Well, why is that? Well, he encouraged so many people by his own going and being a missionary that many people went to the field themselves. And then last but not least, one of the first and most important of those duties which are incumbent upon us is fervent and united prayer. And so with that, we see the life of William Carey. Uh, he's not one that was planting all these churches that we, we know of missionaries today going.